turning 150, lesson three, and this time we're dealing with eccentric turning or multi-axis turning, and we're going to make a letter opener. It's going to have a thin blade like this, and it's going to have a round handle. So the handle end of my blank, I've already cut it to size, length. I mark the center on the handle end, and I'm going to lay out the center on the blade end, but there's a little bit of thought we need to put into this. Let me take you through that. First thing I need to do, I mark the center, as you can see. I've drawn a circle of 3 8 inch radius, and now I need to mark the centers. And the important thing is to know which direction the grain is going. Let's take a look here. I'm going to mark this with the felt marker so you can see it better. But the grain in this block of uh, oak is going the direction like this. And I want to be sure that the edge of the cutting edge is vertical. So my offset is going to be this way and this way, keeping that edge vertical. So what I'm going to do is to come over here, 3 eighths of an inch, and put an X here, an X here. I could have drawn a straight line through there, but it's still the same thing. I want to be sure that my offset is across the grain. Let me mark it. So what we've done here is we've found the direction of the grain, almost corner to corner. I've drawn a 3 8 circle, and I've marked my two offsets, left and right. So when this is on the lathe, we'll do rough shaping in this position, and then to shape the blade, we'll go to this hole, and then this hole, and back and forth like this. This is the simplified version of this project. It could be done uh, a number of ways. If this was also marked on the other end, I would be able to offset both sides like this. And the blade would start out like this and continue all the way up to the handle the same. Since we're holding one end steady and moving only the opposite end, the blade is going to start out narrow, and as it approaches the handle, it'll approach roundness. So that's what's going to happen on this particular piece. Try it this way. If you're successful and you can see what you can get, then I would suggest you go and mark up another piece and offset both directions as an advanced next step. I hope the illustrations in the corner as I talked were uh, helpful in uh, beginning to see this, but we identified the green direction here. We've offset 3 8 either side of that direction. And with these markings laid out, we're ready to go to the lathe and start shaping our letter opener. See you at the lathe. And first thing I want to do is show you the live centers. This is the standard spur drive that we'd normally be using. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to actually use a two-prong drive. And what that's going to allow me to do is to be able to wander the piece back and forth, left to right as needed. So spur drive in. Life center's already here, ready to go. So this is the way I laid it out. We have a, about an inch on each end that I'm going to try to retain as large as possible because in the end, when we want to cut this piece on the bandsaw, I'll have a place to rest the project. Handle and blade's going to break about here. So what we're going to first do is get the piece up on the lathe between centers. Let me do this. Bring it into the hole. I've marked the holes as you know, but I've also um, gone back and repunched them just simply to make sure that they will set properly. So here we are between centers. Make sure it's nice and tight. So if I grab the hand wheel and wiggle the wood, it doesn't move. I may actually want a longer tool rest initially. I may come back to the short one. I'm going to start off with a longer tool rest. Again, a custom one I made. I like the idea of the big bar being round and over one inch gives me plenty of length here for this piece. So, first job is simply to turn this round between 
these two areas here. So this again is a spindle roughing gouge cut and off we go. I can still see my marks on either end. Stopping for a minute because I want to show you something. Remember what I was doing coming right down here to this corner? I have the tool rolled up on its edge. That's why these square corners work so well in rounding something. pieces around. I'm now going to put my mark back on there again so I can find where my four inch stop point is. So let's take a tape here. One, two, three, four. So four is right there. And that's easy. I'll just put a mark. So I know where the handle stops and where the blade starts. So I'll put the roughing gouge away. I think I'll go to one of my larger shallow fluted gouges. So what I'm going to do is shape the handle a little bit and then create the blade shape also. There will be a little cove cut right in here to separate the two. Let me put that in first so I have a marker. Probably be deeper than that, but that'll mark it for the moment. So let's do a little handle shaping. That's way too big. So we have it to rough dimensions. I'm going to take the larger tool rest out and switch it for the shorter because I'm now going to just work on the handle 
and I'm going to come down in here and get a little closer, which I could not do with the larger. Checking for clearance. And now let's shape the handle. Yeah, better height. shape for the handle. Blade is still way too big, but let's come down here and get inside it. Now I'm going to taper the blade from here to here, and one way to control that taper is to set the tool rest at a slight angle also. So I need to take more mass off here and then taper this blade down. Okay, so we have a rough shape for the handle. The blade's going to have to come all the way down to a point, but not for a little while. I do Before I do anything else, is do a little bit of sanding here. Purpose which is to get this as smooth as I can at the moment. The handle's going to pretty much stay this size and shape. It obviously gets turned down more. Cove needs a little work. And what I'm doing here, I'm just smoothing out my rough tool marks. The purpose of which is so that I don't have to spend so much time sanding later on. Now that'll do it for a while. That actually came out pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to begin to start doing the off-center and the axis are right here. So what I want to do is get this absolutely cross-center like that and I'm going to come down here with a pencil and draw a line right along here on the top edge and I'm going to turn to 180 degrees here I'm going to do the same thing right along the top. Pretty close anyway, just a rough edge. So that needs to be the, where the center of the blade is going to end up being. So now, loosen the tailstock. Come over to the first hole. And you see what's going to happen. So you're going to have to be very careful of setting your tailstock 
tight enough, but not enough to break the piece. And watch your tool rest position. Okay, so that's that. Tool rest is locked. Tail stock is tight and locked. Now back to our first cutting here. So what I'm going to do is make a very light cut along here. Now what I've done is I've taken a little bit off of the side here and you can see how far I've gotten about halfway down to that line a little rough I'll take some more off back up here to smooth it out a little bit and what I'm seeing back over here that I hope the camera can see is the shadow of the side I'm cutting I can see there's a bump right there turns up right here and now that turn up is gone it's more straight and there's a little bit of a bump right in here because I can see the shadow stop go to the other center loosen the tail stock come right over to this center And we should be able to do the same thing all over again. There's that bump again. There's a big bump right here in the center. I can see. I can see the shadow of the bump. See how we're doing. We're approaching the pencil line from both sides about equally. This side has a few bumps in it and I'm going to have to take them out right now and then I'll go back to the other side and work some more. doing work like this constantly going back and forth from side to side so I'm slipping just a little bit here I need a little more pressure but that side's coming in and you see where the pencil mark is the side's fairly flat the side's a little bit more radius so I need to take a little bit more 
mass off of this side still. Long steady cuts if you can. Now let's go back to the other side. Loosen the tailstock. <coughs> Slide over to this hole. Over to this hole, a little tightness. Okay, and uh, checking for clearance again. Let's see how we are relative to our pencil mark. Oh, we got an edge. Got an edge here. So I want to take a little bit more off of this side, right in this area here. Let's get back to the center line, improve this just a little bit. I want that, that piece to be just a little deeper than that. Now, I felt the wood uh, flex a lot when I pulled that away. So let's see how centered we are here. Still looking pretty good. So tighten the up tailstock up a little bit. I'm back in the center hole. The purpose is, is so I can come back and finish work on the handle. I would like this coven here to be a little deeper than that. smoother than that. So we have a rough shape. Now this needs to part off. This needs to be done. But before I do that there's a little bit of sanding that needs to be done. And I want to sand the flat of the blade. And the only way to do that is with the lathe powered off. So I'll see you in a few minutes after I get all the marks out of this. One might actually end up going to a belt sander or even a disc sander if you have one to do some final cleanup here. But right now I'm going to go to the bandsaw and I'm going to cut these two ends, these waste pieces off. And then the rest of this is going to be processed by hand. So I'll see you over at the bandsaw. project again. I've been doing a little bit of hand sanding with a little 180 grit. I wanted to shape this point over a little bit so we had a better shape on that. Cleaned up the end where I had to cut this off. So we have a product. We have a letter opener. We have something that we actually have used to do multi-axis turning. 
Now, I don't know how well the videos were able to pick up the shadow that I was looking at, but tool was cutting on this side. And I was watching the reverse image of that same side back here as a shadow. And I could see the bumps that needed to be taken out. So lighting helps a little bit. Putting that pencil line right down this dead center, perpendicular to our axis, gives us a line to aim for when we take wood off of either of the two sides. So what we get with this project is a tool that looks like this, narrow, rounding up a little bit to the handle. If we did it with both axes, we could end up doing this. A little bit more advanced, a little bit more detailed, and a little bit more scary, but it is fun to do. And uh, I had a good time with this. I hope you do too. Find a piece of wood, cut it to length, put it between centers, mark it out as I've showed you in the earlier portion, and uh, give it a try. Next lesson, we're going to do something again different. We're now going to use a technique that we just touched on in Wood Turning 101, and that is a little end grain hollowing. In 101, we had opened up the neck of the bud vase with our shallow fluted gouge. This time, we're going to make a full goblet, drilling and hollowing out, mostly with the shallow fluted gouge. So come back for the next lesson. Stay safe. Subscribe. We'll see you soon.